Hi there, my name is Ron Rogers, and this Flight Test Tales from the Dark Side has to do with the T-38 trainer. Now back in the 70s, we had a fuel crisis, energy fuel crisis, and the Air Force decided that they needed to cut back on the aircraft that the Thunderbirds were flying. They had been flying the F-4, and they decided that, well, we need to save fuel. Now, I got to admire the, the Thunderbirds because these guys, they put them in the T-38s, they kept a stiff upper lip, and they flew them around, and they put on very good air shows. But the T-38, as much as I love it, it's not a frontline fighter. Okay, there's an F-5 version. Actually, that predates the T-38. The T-38 was made off the F-5, but the F-5 wasn't really our Air Force, the United States Air Force front line fighter. These guys had mostly come off the F-4, which had good brakes, drag chute, performed well, stopped well. And they were used to that aircraft. And although they had flown the T-38 in training as students, once they got away from it, they kind of forgot um, that it's kind of a Mickey Mouse airplane as far as gear. It's kind of like a sports car, but you, you got to treat it well when you're coming into land. And there had been some problems. Uh, there was a, a rain-slicked runway in Cheyenne, Wyoming one time uh, during an air show, and they uh, one of the guys ended up going off the runway. So they decided, well, we got to do something about this. So um, they assigned uh, a friend of mine, Major Pete, um, who to be... Uh, an instructor for the Thunderbirds and teach them a lot of the nuances of the aircraft. And I imagine there's a lot of uh, T-38 pilots who don't know that there's a procedure for doing a short field landing in the T-38. And that procedure, instead of using the normal uh, final speed of 155 knots plus additional for fuel uh, weight, uh, we were able to come in at 105 knots. You have to actually walk it up the back side of the power curve and you come in with full military power, 100% power. So you don't have a lot of room for air. You, can, you always have afterburner, but they take just a second to light. And uh, so you're, you're, you're kind of not in a good position, but you can land the aircraft in an extremely short distance. So this is one of the techniques they were taught, uh, various other handling characteristics. Now, Pete wanted me to take over uh, being the Thunderbird instructor. Unfortunately, I uh, was uh, leaving the Air Force shortly thereafter, so that, that never came about. But one thing that he showed me, uh, which was quite interesting and actually rather stupid, I must admit, uh, was out here on runway 22 at Edwards. Now, this runway is 15,000 feet long. Now, the T-38 performs very well, two engines going off this runway. We get airborne at about 2,500 feet. Now, one of the things you do if you're taking off on this runway, you, you have a whole bunch of speeds. And one of them is, uh, you know, if you lose an engine before the safe single engine uh, takeoff speed, you abort. And that's typical. But um, there's a concept on, on excess thrust. Now, a lot of people think, and initially I did too, that, you know, Two engines, so if you lose one engine, you lose 50% of your thrust. Well, the key is excess thrust. And you typically lose 80% of your excess thrust. And that makes a big difference. That applies to uh, just about any aircraft. And uh, it was a nice demonstration point for me. Uh, so we lined it up on the runway here. Uh, Pete put both engines up to full military power. And usually what you do at that point is you release the brakes, you go into afterburner, and away you go. And he says, okay, I want to show you something here. So he took the uh, the left engine, he pulled it back to idle, and we were still there holding the brakes. And he says, okay, you've got it, burner on the right engine only. So I'm thinking, well, this is a, you know, this is a great aircraft, it performs well. So I put it into afterburner and we started the roll. Well, it wasn't as impressive as I had imagined. And we're going down the runway, slowly accelerating, slowly accelerating. And finally, at 11,500 feet down the runway, much past the, what would have been a normal takeoff point, I was finally able to get to the 155 knots, which is the rotation speed. And then uh, we broke ground. And when uh, the gear retracts, the center gear doors open, and this produces just enough drag that if you're single engine, it can be a problem. And there's actually a case where a, a guy took off, was quick on the gear, the gear doors open, produced enough drag that he settled back to the runway. Very embarrassing. So 
we're making sure that we're going from 155 knots to 165 knots, which was the safe speed to retract the gear. Okay, so I'm about 50 feet above the runway. I break ground at 11,500 feet, and I'm still accelerating, but at a very slow rate. So we get, I pass over the end of the runway, and I'm just getting the speed where I can now retract the gear, 165 knots. Of course, tower goes, um, everything all right, guys? And we go, oh, yeah. Uh, so, of course, we bring in the other engine, and I decided, well, that's very interesting, and I never want to see that again. But it was a very clear demonstration of the, uh, uh, the loss of thrust if you start from a dead start, which you never do, um, on takeoff. Now, there, there was a case where a guy had tried this at one point. Uh, he couldn't get the engine started. Uh, it was a Air Force instructor. He couldn't get it started, so he thought, well, I'll just go to the runway. I'll, I'll put the one engine in an afterburner, and I'll get what's known as an air start, where you get enough air through it to spin, and uh, it'll spin the engine up, and then you can get it started. And I don't remember exactly how this came out, but I think he might have been the guy who retracted the gear and slid to a stop. Anyway, interesting lessons learned. Thanks for watching.